Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of The Blacklist Season 9, Episode 9, Bookman Baptiste. As you can see, we have smiles on our faces. And that happens when the show comes out and delivers the best episode of Season 9 so far. I'm feeling good. Oh, yeah. They put out that sneak peek and I saw people get real mad. <laughs> they was, they was, he's a traitor. Dembe's the worst. Oh, man, this was so good. And, like, there was so much payoff. It was ab absolutely the yeah. best episode I think of the season. It's so good. I, I can't wait to get into all of this with you guys because we have some real serious stuff to get into here. Oh, yeah. Who is it in Reddington's organization that ratted out where Liz is because I am confident that it is someone close to him and we are going to talk about it. Before we go further though, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our fun like we are like chomping at the bit here. I'm so excited. This yeah. episode was so good. Yeah, and so we've got all of that. Just subscribe. We don't want you to miss any upcoming updates. Also, happy penguin awareness day, everybody, in case you didn't see. We have some friends. No, Be you have some okay. friends. This is part, part of Matt's collection. I have kind part. of a thing for penguins. <laughs> I don't I don't have an explanation for it here. I apologize if you are looking for one. I just like penguins. So And we have some pictures up at our Instagram, Matt and Jess TV. So head on over there, follow us there, and uh yeah. Okay. All right. Let's Let's get right into it. Let's t t take it away. Yep. Okay, I just want to start with some of... Okay, you guys know that one of the things that I love about this show is the friendships on this show. This yeah. show does friendships like none other. And Debbie and Reddington's friendship is something that I just... I live for on this show. And seeing some of the moments of like right after Liz's death and see, you know, Dembe's brought Reddington back to his apartment, put a blanket on him, and then he wakes up in the morning, Reddington's gone, he's put the blanket on Dembe. I'm just like, this is, these are the moments that just fill my heart. And then by the end of this episode, we've got, you know, Dembe's reading to his granddaughter, then we got Red reading to Agnes and the back and forth. And I'm like, I'm just like, my heart is filled i think i i think something we've said on this channel before and i really believe this is the blacklist is fundamentally a story about love and it is about how these different sort of love stories unfold where you know it doesn't matter who reddington is to liz in the sense that he loved her he cared about her he did everything he could to try to protect her mm -hmm. and reddington loves dembe he's always loved dembe and dembe loves reddington and i think that's why this season has been so hard for so many of us because we've been sort of mourning the breakup of this relationship and to see this episode where we saw them at their best, we saw them at their worst, mm -hmm. and then they kind of come together again, not necessarily where they're working together once more directly, but at least in a way where we can see them more on the same page. It was such just a nice big opportunity to give a sigh of relief. Everything feels a little more right in this world again. It seems like these two are now going to be at least working together to figure out who it is that was like really responsible for Liz's death. Okay, so we're gonna get into that now. All right, all I'm, right. I'm very excited about this theory and I may be completely wrong about this. Okay, so they were sitting down, they had talked about sort of like where Liz was that day, where Dembe was that day, and where was Van Dyke that day. So yes. they had this sort of tracker of everywhere that he was, everywhere that they were, and it didn't really sort of connect up. So their sort of theory is that somebody actually told Van Dyke where to go and that it wasn't necessarily Dembe's fault. And it was nice to sort of see that finally relieved from Dembe, relieved from Reddington, that it was, you know, it's not his fault. It wasn't really Liz's fault either. Somebody else... <laughs> did this so as they're talking about it back and forth and back and forth I'm like oh yeah you know uh this is sort of where where we're landing on this 
Marvin's just kind of staying there being like, do, 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 do. And I was like, oh, it's Marvin. And this is where I am kind of with it. So Marvin has obviously been around a real real long time yeah. he's a pretty big named actor fisher stevens he's been around forever first thing yeah. i ever saw him in was hackers so i guess i'm dating myself a little bit here but anyways he's been with reddington forever he to me he's sort of like the next person in line after there would be dembe so we have this sort of flashback with marvin after reddington just disappeared threw everything sort of away. It all landed on Dembe, who was just like, I never wanted this. I'm not prepared for this. And Marvin has this conversation with him where he's kind of like, listen, Liz was always the wrong person to, you know, be the successor here. She was never equipped for this. She was never qualified for this. Something that I think a lot of us in the fandom have all felt. She just <laughs> wasn't there. And so he's kind of like, you were the next person in line that was the natural successor that would be able to sort of take over this whole thing. But Marvin knows that Dembe didn't want to. He didn't want that. That wasn't his purpose. He was there with Reddington to sort of be the spiritual advisor to protect him. He was never there to take over. So who would be next in line? <laughs> it's Marvin. <laughs> okay. It's Marvin. And I, I know it might be a stretch, but it's just kind of like he was he also spent this whole episode like going on and on and on about how loyal he is. He's so <laughs> loyal to Red. And he said it so many times. I was kind of like, who are you proving this to, Marvin? <laughs> He's saying his name now with such disdain. I'm on to you, Marvin. I, I will say it's come, Marvin. Number one. Bauer theory. I think it's really good. Oh, thank you. Number two. I'm not sure. I'm usually okay. wrong. <laughs> See, it's okay. You know, <laughs> I think this is a good theory. And also, Fisher Stevens, like great actor. Also, oh yeah, very busy actor. He he has been busy tearing it up on Succession, which we also cover here at the channel. Horror but show. I think that if the Blacklist really wanted to get him back, I think you got to convince him that you've got a really, really good arc for him and something that's really going to kind of like charge up his batteries to be back in this world again. Yeah, because if he's the person who told Van Dyke where to go and Marvin would know, so... Then you take out Liz, who's the successor. Then you got Dembe, who's like, I'm not really that interested in this. I don't really want to do this. At some point, then Marvin would have been able to be like, don't worry, I got you, fam. I'm here. It was also very interesting. We haven't seen Marvin all that much as of late. And all of a sudden, he is in like 70% of this episode. Right? Okay. I... I hear you. I, I like your theory, but you know, I, I got to move us in a different direction All here. Right, and here we go. This is where, hang on to your butts, everybody, because it's Panna Baker. No, I it think is it's Panna Baker. Panna Baker is responsible for everything, according to me, apparently. But okay, here. She's a fantastic guest. She's got a lot of power. It's, this is sort of where I'm kind of thinking about it to a certain extent here. Panna Baker obviously has higher aspirations even than just being in the FBI. She is now a senator. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point in season eight, and actually probably before season eight, Pan Panna Baker was basically just like, I'm done with all this. You know what? I'm done with this nonsense, with this task force. And she's just like, well, already like so agitated by everything. I would not put it past her that she is sort of like, okay, in order to ascend further my political career stay mm -hmm. on the senate i don't know if she wants to be president panna baker or anything else she's just on a complete and total cleanup mission where she wants to basically destroy anybody or anything that could say something bad about her whether it be liz whether it be reddington whether it be harold cooper because i think she's responsible for what's going on over there too and also just like gerard is an awesome character i think panna baker is an awesome character as well and i think having one of these two in particular sort of be an architect I think that's something a lot of people would just get behind as opposed to it being some like known age named Stooge. Unless we want to go like full out there crazy Neville Townsend is still alive. Like unless we're doing that, I think I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I, I think that whoever this is, it's just got to be somebody who matters. There's got to be weight behind it. 
For sure. And especially since now we know, you know, it wasn't the tracker. Yeah. It wasn't Van Dyke figured it out. It really is somebody told him. So if that's the case, then somebody who told him has to know where they were and has to be able to send him over there. Panna Baker's a good idea. You know, did she know everything that was going on? Probably not. Yeah. But I mean, she's in a position of power. She could have easily found that information out. Marvin yeah. absolutely knew all that information that was going to be going on that night. So Marvin is definitely a suspect. This is another thing, though, just fundamentally, that we're able to sit here and have this conversation. I love that the episode gave us this because I love that they really sort of set us off on a new specific direction moving forward to the rest of this season, which is probably a good thing because, you know, we could be waiting for a while for the Blacklist to come back. So it's yeah. good to just have this sort of knowledge of, okay, we have a focus, we have a drive, we're mm -hmm. not just watching Reddington, you know, spin his wheels anymore. No, and we actually got what I was hoping for a lot sooner than I thought. I, I think it was even just last week. I was like, oh, man, we're going to be waiting a while before <laughs> yeah. we see Demi and Reddington working things out. Like, I just didn't know how this episode was going to go. And then I saw that sneak peek and I was like, ooh, OK, maybe it's not. Maybe this isn't going to be the <laughs> forgiveness episode, but it totally was. I mean, we even had Reddington at the end tell Dembe that he was really sorry that he just up and left and left him with all this responsibility and all the stuff that ended up happening to Dembe because of it and that you know it was just it was a moment that needed to really happen you don't typically see Reddington kind of weeding through his feelings that way where he's yeah. like I was absolutely wrong on this and you deserve an apology on this. So when Reddington gives the apologies, you know that they are real. It was it was really, really meaningful. And, and I think it shows a lot of growth on Reddington's part as well. I mean, I think back to the Reddington from many, many years ago, and I don't know if he would be able to show this level of contrition in the same way that he did in this episode, especially because, you know, Dembe <laughs> was such a close confidant of his. I mean, Dembe was even closer to him in many ways than Mr. Kaplan. And, you know, so he could have just held on to that anger and sort of convinced himself of whatever he needed to convince himself of in order to go after Dembe. But I mm -hmm. think finally, we can give the writers a little bit of credit here because I think so many of us, including myself, were worried they were just going to repeat Mr. Kaplan all over again. And mm -hmm. I think doing this now, it gives us a sense of relief. It gives us, a, OK, we know what we're doing. We're not just out to like give you all something that you clearly do not want as viewers. Yeah. And there was also a forgiveness over the letter that yes. Reddington even said, you know, you know, hopefully, uh, you know what, it, it's water under the bridge at this point. Hopefully it gave gave her some sort of peace. And I'm glad that he is looking at it that way because he knows that it was going to give her peace. Like yeah. she went to some pretty extreme lengths to find that out so that she could have some sort of peace and him sort of reflecting on that and being like, you know what? It probably did give her the peace she wanted. So at least there is that is something that can hopefully make Reddington feel better too. I'm just glad that these two men are back in some sort of good graces with each other and there's a better understanding. I have been hoping for a little while that maybe we would get some more clues on what was in the letter. Maybe Agnes would say something. I mean, you have been pretty steadfast <laughs> in saying, okay, we're not getting anything on this for a while. And no. I think... Last episode of the series will probably maybe get something, but uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of 50-50 on that after the finale from last year. I think that it's going to be a up to interpretation. Uh -huh. Pick your own adventure. I think after tonight, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely at least of the mindset, too, that they're not giving us anything anytime soon. Because we had a perfect opportunity to get something more <laughs> here with Agnes being back. I'm not even mad that we didn't get it, though, because I did love those little final scene with Reddington and Agnes and Dimbe and Isabella. I do think that was really well done. Yeah, and it was also good to just get some background on, like, like what happened? Yeah. What what led to Dembe and Reddington sort of going their separate ways? And that it wasn't necessarily like a massive fallout. It was really just 
grief and it yep. was reddington's grief that he couldn't get past and he just pieced out and left dembe sort of flapping in the wind not really knowing what to do or how to handle things and he ended up handling things some things in such a bad way yeah. that he ended up getting a kid killed this is the other part of the episode i really liked bookman baptiste great legitimately really really good villain like one of the best villains we've had in a while and you know mm -hmm. it is a very very simple motive you know his son gets killed mm -hmm. he wants to make sure dembe pays so he wants to you know hold Isabella hostage, try to get what he wants. And mm -hmm. like all of this just made sense. It wasn't big, over the top, crazy. <laughs> it was just easy to follow. And it gave his shop such excellent material in this episode. Yeah, no, it was great. And it was good to sort of see what the reason was that ended up making him want to join the FBI. And it was after killing this kid that he was just kind of like, nope. Uh, this is not going to be the way that it's going to go anymore. And he made this decision. He spoke to his daughter about it. She was like, nope. And it seemed <laughs> yeah. that their relationship fell apart because of that even further. And we know that they weren't, you know, the closest, but it seems like that really drove them apart even further. He went and spoke to Cooper about it, who was kind of yeah. like, I I'm on my way out. But you know what? Before I'm out, I can really help you with this. <laughs> Yeah, it was. I, we got I, some answers on it because I know there was a lot of people out there that were like, he's a criminal. How did yeah. he end up becoming part of the FBI? And we all kind of thought it was probably Cooper and it was. Yeah, and that makes that makes perfect sense. I think most of the dots were connected fairly well. I know that, you know, they wanted to tell this story in one episode. I'm sure they could have probably <laughs> thrown a lot more in there if they had more time. But I think for the time that we had, it worked. It made sense. And, you know, also, this was not what Dembe... Dembe never signed up to be Reddington. And I think they made that no. very, very clear. Mm -hmm. And I think they made it clear that this was the role that he wanted until he kind of saw directly the ramifications of him being in that spot. I'm glad that Dembe and Isabella are on a little bit better terms. <laughs> at the same time, I more than understand Isabella being like, bye, at the end of this. Yeah, for sure. And I... I suspect that there will be some criticism from the fans that are only Reddington fans. And I understand because we all love him yeah. that Dembe was going to just straight up betray Reddington. And it was because Reddington decided to help him that it all ended up working out the way it did. But to those people, I just have to sort of like remind everybody that the person that was on the line here was his daughter yes. and family is family and i understand that for dembe reddington also family but this is his daughter and so i tried to put myself in his shoes if it's just like if it's my kid and anybody else mm -hmm. Only my kid is going to be getting everything that they need to get out of that situation. Nobody else matters. It doesn't matter how estranged you are. Your kid is your kid. So uh, that's where I stand on it. I know not everyone's going to agree with that, but you know, and I'm not a person that has kids and I would still be like, my imaginary kid comes before everybody <laughs> else. I don't care who it is. I think once again, it's another great example of what made this episode so strong in that Dembe's motives made complete sense. I think yeah. Reddington understood Dembe's motives, which is, I think, why when we had that confrontation with Dembe and Gerard, when Reddington is Marvin. speaking... Oh, yeah, your, your buddy here, Marvin. And Mar I got my eye on you, Marvin. <laughs> like, I think it was very... Reddington understood fully why Dembe was doing the things that he did. Mm -hmm. And this is ultimately probably the best thing that I can say about this episode, is that we didn't really get any forward movement on the Cooper storyline, which was such a big interesting thing these past few weeks. They kind of just completely threw wrestler stuff by the wayside. We still have not gotten really anything for a Rama season. And yet, for this hour of television, while I was sitting there, I was not thinking about any of that. Like, I wasn't internally complaining. I still won an Aram episode, but everything in this episode just worked well enough that I was just, like, fully in the moment and sort of keeping track of how we were getting from point A to point B. I just want to give a shout out to the writer. His name is David. We follow him on Twitter. Yeah. Fantastic episode. I know he's not watching this video, but I'm just putting it out there. Fantastic episode. He had really hyped it up that this was going to be like 
a really good episode that this was something he was yeah. extremely proud of and david you should be proud of it it yeah. was excellent 10 out of 10. <laughs> here's we have, sorry i'm shouting so much in this video listen, guys enthusiasm is good it is the spice of life no variety is the spice of life but enthusiasm is good also but no the what a just emotional roller coaster we've all been in whether it was us trying to burn the season eight finale to the ground and now us being here, you know, singing do, the do, praises. Do, 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 do. I'm <laughs> and he's just walking out of the room now. We this is the thing, right? When they think they're starting to like get you to leave, they like bring you right back in. And I'm really happy with where the show is and really unhappy that there is a hiatus. But you know what? Ooh, yeah, we're going to be waiting a little while, guys. We're still going to try to be bringing you as much Blacklist content as we can during yes. the hiatus as we typically do. I mean, we did all last summer. We're going to do our best to bring you some more, you know, Blacklist each week. So, you know, stick with us. Hit that subscribe button. We're not going to let you down. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you here next time.